Um, I'll take care of our guests now. You can go back. Yo, later, man. So? My name is Eric. Eric Bain. Well, Eric, I'm Rose. I hope our little demonstration convinced you. I don't think I have any alternative. That is correct. Right now, you also have a much bigger problem you need to take care of. You are not yet a fully-fledged vampire, and that has some drawbacks. How come I'm not a full vampire yet? If a vampire drinks your blood and kills you in the process, you will turn into a vampire yourself. However, that alone does not complete the transformation. First, you have to drink your creator's blood. Only then will you be a full-fledged vampire. And since I don't know who made me a vampire, that's kind of a problem. Exactly. A vampire doesn't just create another vampire for no reason. We try to hide our very existence from humans, and every newcomer increases the risk of being discovered. Your creator put us all at risk when he just left you behind. No vampire would willingly call down the wrath of all the others upon himself. I suppose something must have happened to him. And what happens if I don't drink his blood? You really don't want to know. I have no idea exactly what happens when someone becomes a vampire, but if you do not get the right blood, your brain starts to deteriorate. You will become more and more of an animal, until you finally lose all of your humanity. We call these pitiful creatures ghouls. Believe me, you want to avoid becoming one of those creatures at all costs. Do I have any options? Ah, yes. The blood of an ancient and powerful vampire can theoretically replace your creator's blood. But I'm talking about vampires that have been in the business for several decades. You won't find anyone like that in the sanctuary. But I do know of someone. His name is John Blooming. He's the director of the Harding Museum downtown. Blooming is not a nice man. He's not likely to give you his blood voluntarily. It's not as if I have much of a choice. That is certainly true. However, you should talk to Tom before you head out. He can give you a few tips. Welcome back, Eric. Tell me more about vampires. What would you like to know? Tell me about yourself. Me? Well, it's been about ten years since I was a normal human. I own this club, and I look after the young vampires, such as yourself. But I don't really want to talk about myself right now. Maybe some other time. Can you tell me something about the vampires in the sanctuary? Yes, I could tell you a little something, but that would be kind of inappropriate, wouldn't it? It's best if you speak with them yourself. Tom, you've already met. He is my head of security. The Kruger twins also work here in the club. April is behind the bar. I assume you remember her. June is our DJ. If you want to know more about them, I suggest you speak with them directly. How come nobody knows that vampires really exist? Because we're very careful not to attract attention. Do you think people out there would be happy if they knew that we're living amongst them? We can't be satisfied by synthetic or animal blood. Believe me, I've tried it. No, we need real blood, and we need it from a living person. We are powerful, Eric. You are powerful, but we are not invulnerable. Bullets can harm and even kill us. However, there are just a few of us, but we have plenty of conflict within our society. So we use our power and influence to keep people in the dark. There are vampires out there who have built economic empires and control the media. They ensure that our existence remains secret. Let's talk about something else. Gladly. I have something to do here first. Come back to me when you're ready to go. Hey, you're Eric, right? Tom told me about you. I'm April, April Kruger. If there's anything I can do for you, just let me know, okay? Tell me about vampires. I'd like to help you, Eric, but to be honest, I haven't been one for long. But what would you like to know? What do you know about vampire abilities? Not much, to be honest. My sister made me a vampire, so I can move super fast, which is pretty cool when you're mixing drinks. But we're not in Rose and Tom's league. I've heard there's some really powerful vampires out there who can throw cars and trucks around or, like, 
jump from high-rise buildings, but I've never met anyone who could do that, thank God. Tell me about the other vampires in the sanctuary. Okay, so Tom, you know already. He's head of security and makes sure that everything stays cool. The humans are generally no problem, but sometimes other vampires drop by. But so far, everything has stayed under control. Rose owns the place. She is like a real genius with computers, and she's a total tech junkie too. June is my sister. She works here as a DJ. If you want to know anything about her, your best bet is to ask her yourself. Let's talk about something else. Whatever you want, Eric. Tell me about the museum. I think there's a medieval exhibition there right now. It's been a few years since I visited. One thing I have heard is that the museum director is also one of us. But you'd be better off talking to Tom and Rose about him. See you later. See you, Eric. Hey, you're Eric, right? I don't have much time. As you can see, I'm kind of busy. Tell me about yourself. Honest, are you deaf or something? I'm busy. You can go bug my sister at the bar if you don't have anything better to do. Hey man, everything okay? Can you tell me anything about vampires? Sure can, dude. <laughs> what do you want to know? What do you know about vampire powers? The cool thing about us vampires is that we can do some pretty cool shit. You've already showed us your shadow trick, and that was some slick trick, man. <laughs> Generally though, abilities are different from vampire to vampire. For example, it made Rose into this like wild technology guru. My vampire thing is I learned to see through shit, like x-ray eyes for real, man. <laughs> and I can now hit even harder than before. The older a vampire gets, the more awesome the tricks he learns, man. They say the really old vampires who've like been around for centuries can do some really kinky shit, man. What do you know about us? Not much, man. If you kill someone by drinking his blood, then he turns into a vampire too. Usually causes memory loss, and you don't remember anything from your past. That's what's happened to you, man. You'll wander around as a vampire for a few days, but then you'll slowly start to act more and more like an animal. Eventually your brain just quits on you, dude. And you end up being one of those mindless ghouls. But, <laughs> hey man, that ain't gonna happen, right? I'm sure. Let's talk about something else. Okay, dude. Whatever you want. Can you tell me anything about the museum? Uh, Rose told you about that? Sure, man. What do you want to know? Tell me about Blooming. Blooming? Is one crazy son of a bitch. Guy really ain't got both oars in the water, man. I met him about a year ago, because I was thinking about working for him. But that dude is crazy. You know, it's gotten even worse over the last few months. The last one who went over to see him never returned. We figured Blooming killed him. Sounds like fun. Sure, man.